Here is a Lakewood 18 inch high velocity Fien. This is one of the three Lakewood high velocity Fiens from my childhood. I got this one in, I want to say it was either 2008 or 2007. Probably 2008. So this would have been at the very end of Lakewood's existence and quite possibly this is one of the last ones that was made. The photograph on the box appears to be the 9 inch model HV9 although the stand, I don't know, maybe that was typical towards the end the stands were detachable. The box is not in the best of condition I don't think that it ever was, but at least it's still here. It's kind of interesting that the box is so elaborate because towards the end Lakewood was really struggling to make profit and so the, the products are getting cheaper and cheaper but this kind of box with this many graphics and all this text and the high gloss color and everything this would not have been a cheap box so why Lakewood decided to go with such a fancy box is is beyond me but uh, you can pause the video and read this information if you so desire tells the story of Lakewood I want to revisit this fan because I want to see just how bad it really is if we look at it objectively I think that's all the yeah that's everything there is to see oh no the size different though different lo uh, Lakewood logo stuff's not too old in this picture I know it's, uh, the box of the HV9 I have has got some really old technology that stuff is older but nothing nothing too crazy uh, the, the box of the HV9 has the old CRT monitors on it still, which is funny. It's funny to look at that stuff nowadays, because I remember when that was standard. Three hundred and sixty degree airflow. Three speed control. Energy efficient. Ooh. All metal construction. Quiet, vibration free carrying handle. This is what it looks like inside the box. The stand does come detached. It's a toolless assembly. We'll go ahead and put that together now. The manual is not in here, but I'm sure I have it somewhere. Probably in my box of manuals. Or not the box, my folder. So it comes out like this. And the stand just kind of goes together like this. It's a very lightweight fan. I wanted to revisit this because I haven't used this in several years and I want to take an objective look at this and ask how bad really was this or was it not that bad at all? Back in the in the late 2000s when Lake was selling this stuff these I don't know how cheap the um, the HV9s got, but there was a variant of this in the early to mid 2000s, which I have finally found with the circular guard. Oh, actually, I think that's it right over there. And that one, I, I believe, is considerably more powerful than this one and, and better built. Although I still think that even that earlier one doesn't compare to some of the stuff that Patton was putting out. Or actually, I guess the stuff that Patton would have put out was done already. So, scratch that. Uh, I think that the Patton's outperformed it, but the Patton's were older. The, um, the Patton's that outperformed it, the HV9's were, or the HV18's were different at that time. So, you scratch that whole thought. That's totally wrong. Um, so, these, these might have been 
the best high velocity fans at the time but uh, that's not saying much because once you get into the 2000s the real good quality stuff is pretty much gone so a lot of people didn't like these and the box fans that Lakewood put out at the time I guess with the exception of the P25 I always forget that that ran right up until the end the P25 was arguably the last really good box fan sold though I think that um, the Weather Shield Select by Lasco was probably the last good weather, uh, the last good box fan sold. Really good box fan sold. Um, anyway, so a lot of people hated those at the time. The brace blade box fan, these, because they, they, it just the stuff wasn't what Lakewood used to be, and that kind of just created hatred for it. Well, I think we should look at it objectively considering the time frame that this came out of considering what it cost at the time was it really that bad of a product? I think we're going to find the answer is no I've noticed that to some extent the tables are starting to turn in regards to the brace blade box fans I don't think they're getting quite as much hatred as they used to I'm not sure if that's just because Lakewood is gone now or because those are starting to be 15 plus years old and people are starting to get nostalgia for them I personally think that those box fans are not all that bad and I think that we're going to find the same with this now this logo I've never seen on any other Lakewood fan that's why I believe this was very very late in the game for Lakewood I don't know what other changes were made to the HV9 and the rest of the sizes or if they continue to exist I really have no idea all the HV9s I've come across are in the early to mid 2000s range. I know towards the late 2000s a lot of HV9 knockoffs started to surface and I wonder if that contributed to uh, Lakewood's downfall. It was really a shame to see Lakewood go because Lakewood was such an icon of fans for so many years you know, from the late 70s through the 90s, Lakewood pretty much owned the box van. You know, there was the Lasco Galaxy ones too, but everybody had a 223 at some point. Almost every store had one under its own store brand. And those things were just everywhere. And it was a pretty good fan too. Um, the high velocity fans, a lot of people regard the earlier Lakewood high velocity fans as some of the best out there definitely some of the most efficient from what I've tested just overall really good quality products except for the oscillating fans those were just horrible and I, I don't know why those were so bad considering how good the box fans and so forth were but that's a whole different story is there a date code on this thing unfortunately I don't think so that there is and that really is stinks. And here's the information on the front. It says Lakewood Engineering and Manufacturing Company, 18 inch high velocity fan model 1134, 120 volts, 130 watts, made in the China. It's ETL rated, but it is not uh, UL rated, though it allegedly conforms to the standards. Whoop, I almost just fell. There is some information on the motor. The motor says 0 0.9 amps, 5 microfarads capacitor, model HV-18. Insulation class A. So it's one of these motors that Lakewood kept using towards the end. I don't know what the actual OEM of these things was, if Lakewood made these or not. I find it hard to believe that Lakewood actually made these during this era, but I suppose it's not inconceivable. This is pre-fused plug era, at least for everything else. Last go as well into the fused plugs at this time, but not everything seemed to have the fused plug until more towards the mid-2010s, it seems. So this, this was like a dream fan for me back in the day. 
I had gotten the HV4, that was the first one I got, I think. No, the HV9, I believe, was the first one that I got. You know, I don't remember now. I'm going to have to go back and look at the date codes. But I had gotten HV4 and the HV9 in the early 2000s. And um, I just, for whatever reason, developed a fascination to have this one. Because I always wanted a, a big high velocity fan. We never had one. Nobody in the family had one. And I just thought they were really cool. I liked them. I had never seen them around at different places quite a bit. There were some restaurants that had them, some stores, some um, other places I had, would go to. And uh, since I had the HV4 and the HV9 and I liked those so much, I naturally wanted the HV18 as the, uh, the high velocity fan to get. And so I harassed my mother endlessly to get one of these. And then uh, I forget what the circumstance was, but she finally caved uh, in the late 2000s. I want to say it was 2008, but I can't confirm that without the date code. I don't know how much these cost at the time. I want to say it was somewhere around $60, which was still quite a bit of money at the time. Nowadays, I barely even buy a decent anything with 60 bucks, but, you know, 15 years ago, you, you could. Um, so I got this, and, uh, I remember using it when we were moving out of the, the uh, original house, the first house. And I remember using it in the bedroom a little bit when we first moved into the into the old location. I remember using it at the, at the first house in the bedroom a little bit, but not too much. It really was, was too, too strong, too loud for the bedroom. So I remember being kind of disappointed that I got it kind of like too late to use it at the original house um, we only had used it a couple of times there before we moved out so it must have been like was it 09 then I don't know it was I think it was 08 or 09 regardless um, it's got the little motor uh, the guard design was not what I was expecting I, I really wanted the one with the circular guard design and when I opened it up, it was this, and I, I remember being kind of disappointed and kind of not because now it was a perfect match for HV4 and HV9. Whereas if it was the circular guard version, it wouldn't have matched the other two. So it it wasn't what I expected, but it kind of worked out. You know, it's definitely a very cheap product. It's it's I mean it weighs like nothing, extremely lightweight. It's kind of flimsy. Yeah, the stand leaves a little bit to be desired. The, the grill isn't too bad, but it leaves something to be desired too. Um, interestingly, it's still nice and shiny chrome. It's maintained its luster over the years. So, let's go ahead and start this up on low. And then again, we're going to look at this as objectively as possible. No, it's not vintage. No, it's not the most powerful thing out there. No, it's not as good as the old ones were, but that's not the question. The question is... How good is it for something made in the late 2000s, which is well past the era of good quality? How good is it for a fairly cheap product? And how good is it for the power consumed? Move the camera out of the windstream. Let's check the voltage here. Got 117 the volts. We'll go over to the amps. I want to show the blade first. It is a proper blade with the hub and the riveted blade down to it. It's not a cheap stamped blade. The pitch is, is minimal though. It definitely does not have the, the power that the old ones did. No oil ports, of course. As far as the motor itself is concerned, it is made with very, very um, small gauge wire. But it looks like it's put together halfway decent. This is the only motor I've seen that has the second line in there. Not a detachable cord, interestingly enough. Same as switch as the HV9 and every size in between.
Alright, here we go on the low. What the heck is creaking? How's the balance? Well, it's it's out of balance. It's not horrible, but it definitely is not in good balance. The clock on the blades is a little bit out, but I don't think that that's the whole problem. Well, actually, it does feel like it's considerably out of clock. You can feel a difference in the airflow. fairly quiet, I'll give it that much. Like I could use this in the living room or even in the kitchen. This is not obtrusive. So that is 0.7 amps. That's more than I expected. 76 the watts. The power factor of 0 0.93 the power factor. So for 70 watts, we'll compare it to the last go 3733 which is rated for 0.8 amps. Does this move as much air as the Lasco 3733 does on high? I think it does. It's not like super impressive high velocity power. I, I would say this is more of like a residential product than a commercial product. But it's moving a decent amount of air. I can feel it clear across the room here. Jam my tongue, no crate. Yeah, I got a good strong breeze clear. Oh no! Three fiends just fell over. A margin, an air queen, and a lake breeze. Not good. I like all three of those fiends. Alright, come on. So yeah, I can feel the air clear across the room. Noise level is super reasonable. I gotta balance the blade before we put any hours on this, but I think that this uh, I think this would be great for the living room actually. I'm so glad I have that big room now because box fans and high velocity fans. Well, box fans I never really had somewhere to use. Now I do, and high velocity fans. Some are quiet enough to use upstairs, though most of them would. Be using the garage. This is one I would use upstairs. I actually have some archive videos that I could produce, uh, or well, I've already produced them, that I could upload of this fan when I first got it. Medium. <clears throat> it does have a decent range in speeds. It's shaking pretty bad. That's actually pretty badly out of balance. That's 0.77 the amps, 85 the watts, and 0.95 the power factor. This is shaking something awful. There's a decent increase in power. It's still moderately quiet, too. It, it is a little disappointing for a, for a high velocity product, but it, it doesn't totally fail to deliver. It's, it's moving a satisfactory amount of air. Oh, we forgot to do the airflow tester. Alright, now it's throwing some air. That's a pretty good range in speeds. I don't remember it being that good. 
That's 0 0.93 to amps, 103 to watts, which is considerably lower than what it's rated for, and 0 0.96 to power factory. Actually, I can feel quite a bit of air moving around in here. This is pretty good. It's not a you know patent level performance, but I would actually say this is quite satisfactory. Again, for the price point, for the era, and for what's sitting in there, how much power is thrown, I think this is totally satisfactory. The balance is unacceptable, but that's not the point. Yeah, the balance is atrocious on this thing. All the way across the room is still a very powerful breeze. It's a much better range in the speeds than pretty much any high velocity fan you can get today. Alright, so as I've said before with similar uh, era fans from Lakewood, it's not what it used to be, but if you consider the price, you consider the era, and you consider the power consumption, it, it was built to perform pretty good within those constraints. Will it last as long as the old ones did? Probably not. If nothing else, the horrible blade balance is going to wear through the sleeve bearings. And if you bought this to replace an older one, it probably disappoint because it's not the same. But for what it is, I would say it's a decent product. Some people will argue that it would have been better if Lakewood just stopped making fans before it got to this point. And that's an interesting argument because... You have other brands that I have a lot of respect for, like Carrier, for example. Carrier stopped making window units before they got to be ridiculously cheap. And so some people like that better, where the company just stops the product and preserves its reputation, as opposed to keep going and just making junk. Which is kind of what a lot of people would categorize this fan as. But, I don't know, I think it's halfway decent. Interestingly enough, high velocity fans over the last couple of years seem to have been on the uptick a little bit. I have noticed a lot of newer models are starting to come with ball bearings, which I think is huge because most of the time when you pick these up in the trash, and when I say these, I mean high velocity fans or fans in general, when you pick up fans from the trash nowadays and it's a more recent model, it's almost always a bearing lockup which is due to lack of lubrication and it's sleeve bearings you have ball bearings that's going to seriously reduce the number of bearing related failures that fans encounter nowadays so that's oddly enough a huge step in the right direction I've also noticed that some of them have become reasonably powerful that commercial electric one or commercial electric branded from from Home Depot, you can buy it under the Mainstay brand and a bunch of other brands. I forget what brand that or what OEM it is. It's just some random brand from China, but it's actually halfway decent. Again, how long will it last? Who knows? But the performance, the price, the power consumption—they're all pretty reasonable. Another thing that's kind of interesting is I have seen uh, Lamont has shown a couple of videos, and as have a couple of other collectors. 
there exist a number of copies uh, like descendants of these fans to this day I'm not sure if there is an 18 inch but I know there's a 14 and there's a couple of nines that even still use the, the larger PSC motor so it's very interesting to see those patents still floating around after all these years I don't know exactly what the details are but I know some of the Lakewood patents remained alive through the years I think for a while it was under the Jardin brand I don't know what it is now it's probably been sold again to more miscellaneous manufacturers in China but uh, it is interesting to see that those designs that Lakewood made have been good enough to stand the test of time and still be made so many years later so that's it for this one that would be interesting to revisit it look at it as objectively as possible and revisit it with a higher quality production I think it's been quite some time since I had shown a video of this unit but uh, this is definitely one of the uh, most nostalgic pieces in my collection I have a lot of memories of this from when I got it back in the early 2000s and into the early 2010s as I used it at the new location and I know I have a bunch of uh, videos that I recorded during that time period of this fan so maybe we'll go ahead and get those set up as a from the archive series sometime soon